All right, so let's just hit 12 p.m. So we will get started. Welcome everyone to the final webinar for the CAS 360 New Zealand Education Week. Today's webinar will be on name reservations to company registrations. My name is Christopher Banks and I'll be taking you through the content today. So as you've seen, possibly for the last week and beyond if you were attended some of the webinars in the CAS 360 Australia Week, uh, the ones that are applicable to New Zealand, I've got to go through a bit of housekeeping. So first, uh, you're all in listen-only mode. There is a chat, however, you will not be able to post to it, only uh, myself and the other panellists, uh, my other team members will. However, there is, if you do have any questions, there is a Q&A. Uh, you can open up that Q&A window, it should be along the bottom of your Zoom. Uh, and throughout the webinar, or at the very end, you can ask a question, and either myself, if I see it or have time to get to it, uh, will answer. Otherwise, one of my fellow team members from the documentation and training team will uh, answer it for you. Uh, the other part is that this webinar will be recorded. So all the webinars that have been uh, completed during this education month uh, have been recorded and uploaded to YouTube. There's also a education page where you could enroll for future webinars. Uh, unfortunately, as this is the last webinar, there's nothing for you to enroll into anymore. However, you can find, I've posted into the chat, you can find some of both the previous uh, webinars that we've recorded, as well as uh, the slides for those webinars. I'm also sending you the YouTube playlist, and this includes, this current playlist just includes all of the webinars from the month. So there will be a few New Zealand ones in there, but you'll also see some of our other, pr other products, which for you guys isn't very important, so you can ignore them. I'm just letting you know. Don't start from the beginning. It'll be for products you aren't really interested in. So, as you can see, we've been through the, for the CAS360 New Zealand Education Week, we've gone through all of the different uh, topics, with today's topic being the final one. If you missed any of them, as mentioned in the chat, there's the two links. Uh, please use them to go back at a later date and watch them uh, when you can. Otherwise, uh, the just for reference, uh, all the video recordings, you can't get them sent out, though you will receive an email that will contain the YouTube link, so you can grab them after each webinar if you've signed up, even if you missed it, so you should get those emails if you haven't gotten them already. And as I've mentioned, not super applicable for most of you guys in New Zealand. However, we did have a couple of weeks earlier that focused on either some of our other products. However, there was half of the webinars in the CAS 360 weeks, uh, or the CAS 360 week, was applicable to you guys in New Zealand. So if you can, it's basically any uh, webinar that was at 10 a.m. Uh, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, it's 12 p.m. for you guys, uh, was available for both Australians and uh, New Zealand, or was applicable to. If you see any of them that were, so it should be the first, and then the third, and the fifth, seventh, and ninth webinar. The All the even webinars uh, were Australian only, so not worth your time watching them. And most of the content that was covered in those webinars we're covering, we're covering in this week's. So on today's agenda, we're going to start off with uh, company name reservations. Then once we reserve a name and lodge it to the company's office, or file it to the company's office, we'll then go into create, uh, registering that company and all the options you have there. Then once the company has been registered, we will look at 
pre preparing the pre and then post incorporation documents with uh, to be filed to the company's office. So first, one of the first things you need to do in with the company's office compared to ASIC uh, is that you have to reserve the company name first. It is a requirement from the company's office and each company name reservation costs $10 dollars New Zealand plus GST and I'm giving you a link now of where this information is from it is from their company's office website if you're interested it's up to you these will also be this is in the slides so once this is uploaded on the BGL education page you'll be able to get these slides and the link will be here as well Oop. So we go back here. Go to our companies. So when you start, you'll be on, you'll first log in, you'll be on the BGL and you'll be on companies. The company registrations is a tab along the top of the company page. Click into that. You can see here, because I don't have any company registrations in this firm, we have some name reservations. Uh, I'm really hoping one of these um, comes through. Uh, I think the training environment's a little slow. It's a typical training environment thing to happen. So hopefully one of those comes through by the time we finish this name reservation and file the correct documents. Uh, otherwise, if not, I have plans. That's okay. So we click add na uh, company name reservation. We've got the jurisdiction. Our company type is going to be a limited company. The proposed company name will be as E003, and then the legal element that is required. I skipped accidentally there because I hit enter as I went to go grab my mouse. We'll just uh, edit it really quick just to bring it back up. So I've entered the limited there as that is a requirement for a limited company. Then we have the authorized signatory. So this is the agent that will be filing this with the company's office and confirming that uh, this what they would like to reserve this name. And then you have the company's office user ID. Uh, we don't have an organization here, but if you part an organization, that'll come up here. You can't edit any of these details as it's a part of the user or the contact that is the agent in CAS 360. So we have two options here, save and save and prepare. I just technically, because I hit enter just before, I hit save. And if we hit save, that will bring us back to the CAS company or back to the company registrations or name reservations tab. Um, then you can see here, we have options to edit or delete if this is uh, edit if we need to change the name, we misspelled it or something, or we made it the wrong type of company. Delete if we no longer need it. Then we have the option option to prepare the documents. Clicking prepare. This is the what would pop up if you hit save and prepare. We have a cover letter and the company change summary. You can send it out to the to your client for review. You have all your options as usual and the templates for normal CAS 360 stuff, uh, like document preparation. However, we're in this case, we're just going to download this file and then show the client. Once the client's happy with what we've got, we can come to the documents page. We can see here that our change has the company name reservation has been prepared. One change, we've got the company is being reserved for a new company name by Xiaomi. That's awesome. Come over here. If we want to make any uh, changes to the document, we can do so here. However, we're just going to file it as is. So we're going to click Lodge. 
we have the option to hide this confirmation. In this case, we're just going to file it with the company's office. Ah, that's good to know. We've had our form rejected because it's too close. Because we have one being approved. So we can see this has been rejected. And now we can delete it. But normally you would lodge it and to sh or file it. And you can see here in the documents page that we have all the previous ones that I did yesterday have been successfully lodged. Since this is rejected, it's no longer needed. You can just click delete, delete the name reservation. Um, as you can see, unfortunately, even though it was only roughly five minutes, it still hasn't come through, which is disappointing. But I anticipated this because it's a training environment and that's what the training environment does best. So instead I have a, another firm here, it's the test environment. So instead, you can see we've got the jurisdiction selected as New Zealand. This is because we have multiple jurisdictions in the test environment. You can come to company registrations. So what we're going to do here is click uh, company registration plus. We'll select the jurisdiction for New Zealand. We have a question here that as this is applicable to New Zealanders, you have to have reserved a name through the company's office. So it's asking us, hey, have you made sure you've done this first? If you haven't, you would then have to click to name reservations. That would change you, automatically switch you to that tab where you could then reserve the name. Otherwise, we have, we're going to click yes. Continue through to company registrations. This is going to open up the company registrations pop-up. I'm going to select the company here. You can get see how long you have the name is reserved here uh, before it will expire and then you you have the option to extend it. You can see here, this company, we're not even going to work out how many uh, years that is, but it's a lot. Uh, we can see the company type that we reserved is a limited company. We have the option here to select when the annual return month is, so you can help decide when it will be due. We also have the whether the company has a constitution. If it does, you click yes, and this will open up a small little drag and drop, or if you click browse for file, it'll open a pop-up where you can grab a whole bunch of different documents and upload them there. So slowly begin working through, it's pretty straightforward, just slowly begin working through all the different tabs. Click next here, select the address. It's then going to tell you what is mandatory. So we have to go through and select the addresses for the registered office address, the address for service, and the address for communication. Do have the address for a member's register and the register's address. However, this isn't mandatory. You then also have to enter the email. You can see here now we've met the requirements for validation. Uh, there'll be no issue. You can enter in the contact numbers. For now, I'm not going to bother. We're going to get to officers. We add an officer. We're going to chuck in, uh, well, we're going to put uh, select our officer here. It's going to come up with their address and their birth details. Do they have an inland uh, revenue department number? If they do, hit yes, enter it here. For simplicity's sake, I'm not going to bother. Then you decide what position they're going to be. In this case, because it's a brand new company, they have to be a director. Uh, you've also got the option to select the meeting status. That's fine here. So we're going to move on to shareholders. Oh, I forgot to hit save. That's brilliant. Remember to hit save. Don't want to make a fool of yourself. Uh, in front of everyone, hit save. Uh, it's now added 
the officer. Again, you can continue on adding as many officers as you need. And as you can see here, you have the option here to save and close the registration. So if you suddenly get more urgent work that you need to get desperately get to, uh, maybe an annual returns come in and you need to file it straight away, or a client wants some changes made and it's more urgent as they need to pay the annual return fee, uh, you can maybe, you can just hit save and close and it will save where you're up to in the company registration and then you can come back to it later whenever you want. However, it won't let you file it until your everything has been completed. So next, we're going to go to, you can also click next here and this will just take you to the next page. In this case, now we've got to go to shareholders. I'm just going to add the same contact because I'm not very creative. And this is just a training. Um, so then you have the option, Does they, do they have an inland revenue department number? Again, yes, enter it here. Uh, are they been officially held? If so, yes, select that contact. Otherwise, come down here, select the shares. Uh, I believe you can start typing and create your own share type. I'm just gonna stick with Ordinary shares, the transaction type, wh what the consideration is, meeting status, and the certificate number. Then we're going to hit save. And now we have our shareholder. So we click next. This takes us to Ultimate Holding Company. So does the this company have an Ultimate Holding Company? Right now you can see it's pretty barren. We haven't said yes. If we say yes, going to ask us to select the holding company. For example, I'm going to select this. Once I start filling in all the details, including the whether that it's a company registered in New Zealand, it's going to ask me for the type. It's going to ask for the NZBN, the company number, company of registration, and the registered office address. Uh, I don't actually have the NZBN, so we're going to ignore it. Now that we've just left it as no, it's already ticked it because we don't have anything. There's nothing there to be filled out. Now we're going to get here. It's going to ask us, do we want to, as part of the application, uh, do we want to provide, uh, we need to provide a business industry code. However, would we like to apply for a company uh, inland re uh, revenue department number? I'm going to hit a button. Yeah, we're dairy cattle farming. Um, then, if we are, we have a small questionnaire to fill out. So we need to enter the trading name, answer these questions. It's already picked up that the company premise address and the postal address for tax purposes. Uh, well, it's it's automatically ticked that, yes, we are going to be using the same as our registered office address and same as the address for communication. However, if you aren't, you click no, change the address. However, we are. Then you'll need to select the contact for the tax registration application. Uh, you also need to answer whether fringe benefits will be offered to ordinary or shareholder employees. I also believe you do need to have the email and mobile as well as a phone number here for the company contact details so that the company can be contacted for tax purposes. Yeah, it's given us an error. Well, at least one company contact should be filled in and the applicant needs their mobile number. So you do need an email, you need one, at least one kind of number here entered so that the tax uh, company's office, or the, I mean, the uh, Inland Revenue Department can contact you, as well as attach the phone number to your contact. 
You have the option here to register as an employer. We then have a whole bunch of different options to enter here. Previous have worked. Answer to go through these. I, I, I'll answer how often you intend to pay. First day payment cycle. Who's going to be dealing with the payroll obligations? Select no. Uh, we do have the option here for a tax represent re representative, and that's popped up because we've toggled yes on for both the uh, register as an employer and tax representative because we toggled yes on we would like to register with the for the company RID, RID number. They're going to both pop up, so you have extra information to fill out there. But this is a simplistic example. I'm just going to select no because I don't have time to fill all that data in. Then we can go to the GST registration. Are we going to register for GST? If we hit yes, it's going to pop up with all these extra questions, whether you're going to use uh, payments or invoice or a mixture of both. How often you would like these GST returns to be filed? All those kinds of questions. If you're not GST going to register for GST, leave it as no. Come down to the finish, finished section. And what you're going to get is an overview of all the details, a final review of what you've currently entered into CAS 360. So if, for example, you suddenly realize there is an ultimate uh, holding company, quickly come back, come over, click yes. And now finish will change to, uh, there's a warning because we, you have not fully finished the uh, one of the prior sections. Once you're happy, you have the option to save and close if you don't want to repair the forms just yet. But if you're happy to, we're going to click save and prepare. So what this is going to do is this is going to prepare all the pre-incorporation documents. So you can see straight away it's picked up there's an issue. Uh, my terribly named contact, John McMahon, uh, has no email attached. So then we can click here to add the detail. Most likely you'll attach an email beforehand, but you have the different documents um, here. You can see that uh, electronic signing um, has automatically popped up. Uh, you do have, the, as of always, if you come down to the electronic signing options, uh, it's, I don't think it's letting me save it again because he does not have uh, an email address. But you do have the option there to turn it off if it's not necessary. But you have all the electronic they're all able, most of the documents are able to be electronically signed. You also can go through, as usual, apply this date to all documents. Uh, you have the option to um, go through all the document options. Uh, you can't do anything for the Form 3, so that's a government or company's office uh, form. So we just we're just going to put the data in. Can't edit the template there. Otherwise, for most of these documents, you can change the template if you wish. If you need it to be reviewed, enter here, put in the reviewer's email. Add any note that you want to add to the reviewer that you want them to address. Otherwise, send all. If, for example, you do, uh, you're do you wanting them to sign, send it out to the client and potentially, if it's this electronic signing, uh, send it out, send them a letter to your electronic signing provider and then your clients will get the email from the 
electronic signing for pro provider. Um, otherwise, and then they could all sign the same documents uh, when they are able, and it will come back as soon as they're all signed, back to you. Otherwise, you can just send it to the reviewer or the clients to look over. Otherwise, you have the option here, of course, as usual, to download all. Whether you choose to download them in a separate as separate PDF files or in one big pack, up to you. And if you need to upload any extra documents, that is also your choice. Then, of course, you would file these documents with the company's office. Uh, through the documents page or you can I believe if we had them prepared and they were ready to be filed there would be a lodge button here and you could file it then uh, in this case I do not have it and I'm not gonna bother filing however once the company is registered and you can see the stat uh, status has changed to registered you will have the option to prepare the post incorporation documents so if we click that, it's going to prepare all the minutes, the registers, and I'm pretty sure that's a random document that's been added. So I'm going to choose to ignore that, and the share certificate. That is the joy of going on the test server, we're testing a whole bunch of different features. Or well, the product team will be testing a bunch of different features at once. But then you've got that here, and of course, as usual, you have your options. You can send them out to your client via email, otherwise you can download them and then it will be considered prepared. Uh, that leads us to the end of the webinar.